What's up, everybody? This is Whiskey in the Six. I'm Rob. Today, I'm doing the top 10 Scotch whiskeys in the 18-year-old category that you can buy on the shelf right now. Whether it's in the US or the UK, you can find it now. It's readily available. Now, there's two rules to this list. It can't be cash strength, and it has to be an ongoing issued release, meaning it has to be produced almost every year, or at least biannually. This is to ensure that you guys can find these bottles. Now, I did a list a while back, probably about three years ago now, or almost three years ago now, of my favorite 18 year old Scotch whiskeys. That list has changed too, but I'm not gonna go back to that because I don't wanna put stuff on the list that you're not gonna be able to find, all right? The Laphroaig 18 year old that finished first on that list is no longer available. It's one of the best whiskeys I've ever had, let alone the best 18 year old whiskey. And I, unfortunately, it's no longer available for the retail price of $70 American, which it once was, or even on the secondary, there's very few people letting this go because it's that good. So this list is just what you can find today. So here it goes. My honorable mentions are the Glengoin 18 and the Deanston 18. Now, the Glengoin 18 made the list on my old list. It's no longer in the running for me. And it's because my palate has changed over the years. You're gonna notice a few changes on this list. I can't bring myself to buy many bottles at 43% anymore. I don't find that they deliver enough for me. I'm looking for unchill filtered. I'm looking for that extra ABV starting at around 46%. So the Glengoyne 18, although a very good whiskey and I do like it and I do recommend it and it is on my honorable mentions list, it's just not there for me anymore. Uh, so unfortunately, that is no longer in my top six, let alone my top 10. I'm doing a top 10 video here. So here we go with number 10 which is the Bunnahabhain 18 year old. This one's still bottled at 46.3%. It's very good stuff. The new one gets some criticism compared to the old one, but I think it's still very good and good value for what you get. Number nine is the Bal Blair 18 year old. Now this one is actually pretty good. A lot of people are upset that they went from vintage dates to age stated whiskeys. A lot of people think it was because they wanted to jack up the price, which is exactly what they did. This 18 year old is actually very good though. Number eight is the Talisker 18 year old. This is a very good whiskey. It's not available in Canada, but it is available in the US, the UK, and most places in Europe as well. Really good stuff, unchill filtered, maybe added color because it is a Diageo product, but I don't think it is because it's pretty light and the ABV is there as well to make sure that it's unchill filtered. So I really like this. You get a little bit of smoke, you get some nice saltiness, just a great all around sipper. Number seven comes from a distillery I'm in love with. It's the Glen Allocky 18 year old. Now this Glen Allocky 18 year old, a lot of people didn't really love it. Uh, a lot of people chose to go with the 15 or the 12. I really like it. I don't think it's as good as the new 15 and 12. I think it's better than the older ones. What I will say though is the next release of the Glen Allocky 18, in my opinion, will be amazing. They just keep banging out really, really great whiskey. Glen Alki 18 is one to keep on your radar. I think it's gonna be very good the next time it pops up. And I already like the one that they already have. Number six is the Long Girl 18. Now this whiskey varies every year like Springbank always does throughout their lineup, whether it's Springbank, Hazelburn, or Long Girl. This one changes. So I like the ones that I've tried. Some are better than others, of course, but it's one to keep on your radar because it's always gonna be quality whiskey in my opinion. Number five is the Old Pulteney 18. Now, I was very worried when the Old Pulteney 18 came out, this whole line of the 12, 15, 18, and 25, because I really, really enjoyed the 17 and the 21. This one is excellent though. If you've watched my channel for a long time, you probably saw the live where Jeremy and I went through all of the Old Pulteneys. The 18 might be slightly better than the 17. I'm not 100% sure on that. We did taste them head to head, and I think that night we both agreed that the 18 was better but it's great whiskey you need to try it and i think it's a reasonable price as well so you want to keep that one on your list number four is a whiskey that as soon as i finished my last list i got to try my last list of my top 18 year old scotch whiskeys i got to try this 18 year old scotch whiskey and i was upset that i tried it one day too late it was the anok 18. i really really like this whiskey 46 percent 
a combination of X bourbon and X sherry casks. It's just well-rounded. It's got a nice bite to it, but not too hot. It's got nice overall character, nice maltiness. I really, really like the Anak 18. I think Anak is one of the most underrated distilleries, and I pretty much like almost anything that comes out of that distillery. So check them out, Anak 18. Number three is the Springbank 18 year old. Now, if you go back to my old list, it wasn't even on my top six. I was actually very disappointed with the Springbank 18 year old that I purchased around that time, which is about three to four years ago. I've since tried three Springbank 18s that I really, really enjoyed. And honestly, just like anything else Springbank does, once in a while, they'll come up with a miss, but for the most part, they hit it out of the park. This one is excellent. Springbank 18 year old is a good gamble in my opinion on any occasion. If it's sitting on the shelf for a reasonable price, I highly recommend you pick it up, especially if it's sitting next to stuff like Highland Park 18 or McAllen 18, which are usually priced more than the Springbank 18 and don't deliver nearly as well. Number two is the Glendronic 18. Now I've recently criticized Glendronic for removing the fact that they're unchill filtered. This is 46% at least until today's date and hopefully that never changes hopefully they never start adding color to that either the glendronic 18 is one of the whiskeys that made me fall in love with heavily sherry matured casks or heavily sherry matured whiskeys anyway um glendronic 18 is awesome i've had the 2015 i've had the 2017 the 2018 and the 2019 and all of them delivered and all of them were excellent I will say though that in 2019, I had two different batches of the 2019 and the first batch that I had that actually said Billy Walker on the tin was much better than the second batch that I had that said Rachel Berry on the tin. So I don't know if it had anything to do with the visual, the power of suggestion, but I do think that the batch by batch difference in those two made a major difference on taste and smell. I will see if I can link below to the batch I have and I'm working on now compared to the batch I had previously because it did make a difference. That is the oldest of the Glendronic 18s. After that, it goes back to 18 year old. So keep that in mind. Again, this is my list of what I enjoy now that might change next year. So this is why this is an ever progressing list and your list might look very different, but I hope that you try to keep all these in mind and maybe give these a shot if you haven't already. On to my number one. Now, if you talk to me pretty much every year for the last four years, five years of my journey through whiskey on this channel, and before that, I would never have thought that this would be on my number one. I've had product from this distillery that I just did not like. I've had 18 year old product from this distillery that I just did not like. For this to be my number one shows how drastically the distillery has renamed, rebranded, remastered their product. And that's the Aaron 18 year old. Honestly, this Aaron 18 year old is stunning in my opinion. It is one of my favorite go-to whiskeys on a daily basis. I stocked up on it when I had the chance. Then it came out again and now everybody's getting a chance to stock up on it uh, in Canada anyway. And I think you guys should be able to get it wherever you are. It's really, really good stuff. It's very well priced. And honestly, I don't think, and I can't think of any 18 year old in this category that's unchill filter, no added color, beautiful viscosity, and just delivers the way the Aaron 18 year old does on a regular basis. So that's why it's my number one. I honestly love it. I think it's fantastic. I'm not an Aaron fanboy at all. If anything, I'm the opposite of that. Uh, but it managed to pop into my number one category and good on them because they have some tough competition, especially in this category, because I've had tons of 18 year old scotch. Honestly, if you go back to that old video, like I keep referencing to, you'll see how many I've actually tried. I list pretty much all of them and I've tried more that I couldn't even think of at the time. And I still haven't mentioned now because they just don't make it anywhere on any of these lists. That's it guys. Hope you like this video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Get the bell to get notifications for when I do release videos. You can support this channel on Patreon. One dollar will get you these types of videos a few days earlier. And there's a whole bunch of fun tiers that you can participate in some mystery dramming as well. Cheers.